This is Tiffany Bell. <laughs> what? What are you wearing? I'm, I'm joined now by... Hi, I'm Stavros. Good afternoon and welcome to the London Motor Show here at Battersea Park in London. We are going to kick off this year's show with this Napier Railton. And here with me today is Ralph Bruff, who's going to tell me all about this car today. Ralph, thank you very much for joining me today. Stavros, I'll tell you as little uh, as we can fit in for this wonderful motor car. Uh, this car was built in 1932-33 for a very famous racing motorist at the time called John Cobb. John Cobb was a wonderful uh, man, uh, quite well to do. Um, he raced quite often at Brooklands, but he never liked coming second. Consequently, he demanded of a company that was resident at Brooklands circuit that they should build him a car that would win every race that he would enter yeah. and this is what they made Reed Railton the designer um, first of all purchased an aircraft engine 24 liters between five and six hundred brake horsepower and then installed it in this magnificent piece of machinery weighing two tons yeah. and had a body built on it uh, by uh, John Gurney Nutting, what a wonderful name, John Gurney Nutting, uh, the great uncle I do believe of Penelope Keith and um, sure enough when they first started this car it won the first race and in the next six years of its life it won 47 world speed records. It even won records after the war as well. It's a magnificent piece of machinery and it's got 24 litres, 12 cylinders, no front brakes, um, back brakes aren't ever so good but they're there and um, it does about three miles to the gallon. <laughs> so, but Ralph, 500 to 600 brake horsepower back in 1933, that's not far off what the hurricane behind us <laughs> develops today, the LP610. Yes indeed. And for you petrol heads, it's also producing uh, around about 1,300 foot-pounds of torque at 1,800 revs per minute, which is tremendous and no doubt subst substantially more than our neighbour's car here. <laughs> That's a lot of torque. <laughs> That's getting into truck figures. <laughs> it is indeed, yes. Well, that's wonderful, Stavros, and thank you for taking an interest. It's just a brief overview of this wonderful car's history, and we'd love to see you again at Brooklands and enjoy the rest of the show. <laughs> thank you very much, Ralph. You're welcome. Thank Take you. care. Thank you. So that was the Napier Railton Special. <laughs> thank you very much, Ralph. Now let's continue looking around the London Motor Show 2017. So I'm now joined with Yanni Mize. Yeah. Yanni Mize, the rapper. <laughs> How you doing? Pleased to meet you. You well? No, no music involved. No music. Only vinyl. <laughs> Only vinyl and cars. That's what we do here. And Yanni Mize, you've done a fantastic job in this Mark 7 Golf. Yep. It looks absolutely fantastic. It's a good car. It's one of my star's cars. We wrapped it in like a satin blue, like a shimmer yeah. uh, finish. Very, very nice. Tinted the light. It's a good looking car. Mm. One question, Yanni Mize. Yep. What is the most awkward car to wrap? 
<laughs> I would probably say, and if you've seen some of my videos, you'll know that I actually don't like this car, I would say the G-Wagon. Uh, the G-Wagon, difficult car to strip down, and then when you're wrapping it, the way the panels are, and you've got loads of strips, certain things that can't come off that car, yeah. so I would say a G-Wagon. G-Wagon, there you go. The G-Wagon is the most awkward car to wrap. And I don't <laughs> like that car either. <laughs> <laughs> yes, nice please. Thanks care. a lot. Yeah, Thank pleasure. you. See you later. Let's continue looking at the show. <laughs> Look who I just bumped into. <laughs> Paul up, Wallace, <laughs> Supercars of London. I've got them all now. <laughs> Tim doing? Burton, Archie, Seb, Mr. JWW, and finally, I got Paul Wallace. <laughs> so Paul, I've only one question to ask you. Yep. You're enjoying the show anyway. Yeah, I love the show. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. If somebody gave you the keys to any car out there. Aventador or SV, I don't even have to let you finish the question. Now. What about a McLaren? No, sorry, Aventador S, not the SV. I keep saying S. Yeah, S, Aventador S. I drove it this morning, it's amazing. And we, we've seen it in Monaco. In Top Marks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Aventador S. Yeah, I love it. There you go. <laughs> nice to meet you. Simple as that, Paul. <laughs> Cheers, take care. Cheers. Paul Wallace, Supercars of London. Now it's See time guys. for me to continue looking at the rest of the show. <laughs> gentlemen children welcome to the London Motor Show for my little afternoon interview and I hope you're having a good time here family day out like so many kids here nice and warm it's getting less crowded now as well this morning it was completely rammed and it was my pleasure this morning to have a supermodel on the stage in the shape of Jodie Kidd I've now got a YouTube superstar whatever one of those is because this is what one of those is it's Paul Wallace Paul come in now Take a seat, take a seat. Hello. Now, Paul, uh, you started driving your mum's Ford Focus. Yes. And ten years later, you bought yourself a Lamborghini Huracan. This is correct. That is correct. As so, weird as that sounds. So, uh, just to educate everybody, I mean, uh, from what I understand, so what, you, you, you just get your phone out, do you? And just do this a bit. That's exactly it. Right. And then you buy a Lamborghini Huracan. It's not as simple as that sounds. No. But it's kind of like that. <laughs> that actually looks like one of my videos as well. They're super shaky and just running around trying to chase cars. But you called your YouTube channel Supercars of London, but I, I presume the first car you had to film was Mum's Ford Focus, which isn't exactly a supercar. How, <laughs> how did you get your hands on a supercar to start this channel? My channel was Supercars of London because I started filming these Ferraris and Lamborghinis driving past. So I never asked the owner whether I could film the cars, I just filmed them. So I didn't necessarily need the access to the cars, they were already there in Knightsbridge. I never once filmed my mum's Ford Focus. Uh, I don't think the audience would be that interested in it, but she still owns it now. And uh, yeah, so from there. So then, I mean, how do you monetize this? I mean, just do YouTube just send you a million pounds a week in the post? I mean, how, how does the... How does the system work? You, you started off, I presume, doing it as a hobby. So Ex when did you first, I mean, how many years before you earned any money out of your hobby? Well over six years. So when I started, YouTube wasn't owned by Google. So there was no adverts. I was purely posting pictures for, and videos for people to watch. 
And then when Google took over, I actually submitted a business plan to Google for them to monetize my YouTube channel. Whereas now, you can literally click a button on your channel and get adverts on it. Which is the problem with YouTube at the moment with all of the news. Is this your camera? Well, this is what you do. All you do is you pick up your camera, right? You go up, 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 up and do a bit of years and yaz. Then you go London Motor Show. You zoom it in and out. You just look at the back of my head. Then you pan round the audience, you see. And then you shake the camera a bit. And then yeah, you go like that. Shake the camera. And that's on. it. And then all you do now is you load that up and you'll have 100,000 uh, followers and you'll be pushing him off the top. I tell you, easy. <laughs> The best tip is definitely consistency. So find something that you enjoy doing, not necessarily what you think will be successful on YouTube, because there are a lot of successful people on YouTube, but find a niche that, of someone that hasn't done something and, uh, and be consistent at it, because the way the algorithms work on the internet without boring people is the more consistent you are, the better you're going to be building a platform and the more people are going to start seeing your videos and that's the best way to get exposure on YouTube. So consistency and, and find a niche that no one's done before. Hello, my name's Sadie and welcome to the London Morgan Stand at the London Motor Show 2017. Um, we're here and I introduce you to some of our vehicles. This one is our limited edition EV3. It's Morgan's first electric vehicle. It's our UK 1909 edition that we collaborated with Selfridges. The 19 is represented because both Morgan and Selfridges were founded in 1909. So we did 19 of this limited edition vehicle with nine British designers who designed the accessories such as the luggage case which is situated on the back of the vehicle. This is a Globetrotter suitcase and we did other designers such as Alexander McQueen, Bowstaff um, and other ones such as that. Moving on we've got our classic edition. This is a Roadster. It's a 3.7 Ford Mustang engine. It comes in a full range of colours and can be adapted to how you like it with the leather interior, um, dashboard um, and wheel specs. I'll move you on to our next vehicle. And this is our Aero 8. This has a BMW 4.8 V8 engine. Still built in the traditional Morgan style with the ash frame. It's carbon fibre. Um, fully adaptable inside again like all the others. So you can have the sat nav, you can have a different le lots of different choices of levers, steering wheels, the paddles. Um, it's got a 367 brake horsepower. So it's incredibly fast and incredibly light for what it is. Um, the boot opens backwards and you can, it comes in a soft top and a hard top. The hard top gets taken completely off and the soft top just gets packed into the back here. There is a small boot space, um, but it's our fastest edition and probably one of our most favourites. So I hope you've enjoyed looking at our stand today. Thank you for coming along. I'd really love one of these Fiat 500s. This is the 500L from 1970. Absolutely love these Fiat 500s. <laughs> And this is Aston Martin's new supercar, which will be released sometime next year or even 2019. This is called the Valkyrie. Used to be called the AMRB001, standing for Aston Martin Red Bull Racing, who are heavily involved in the development of this car. Only 150 of these will be built, 25 of which will be race cars only for the racetrack. So it's said it's going to have a 6.5 litre Cosworth V12, naturally aspirated and a power to weight ratio of one to one. So if it's got a thousand horsepower, it will only weigh 1000 kilos. That is the aim. We will see what happens. Of course, Adrian Newey, who is a very successful Formula One car designer, 
is heavily involved in the development of this car, along with designer Marek Reichmann, who is responsible for the DB11 and how fantastic that looks. And we have over there a V8 Vantage S and a Rapid S over there and a Vanquish here. So that is your Aston Martin Valkyrie. The cost of these cars could be anything between two and three million pounds. But it'll be interesting to see the final production car because this is only a prototype. So you can see the interior there, very Spartan, <laughs> but the aerodynamics there. Yeah, this is going to be one of the hot new supercars when it comes out in a couple of years time. The Aston Martin Valkyrie. And we've seen both of these cars in Monaco. The remastered Mini by David Brown. This is the Cafe Racer Edition. Only 25 of these will be built. And of course we had the Monaco Edition. 25 of them will be built as well. So they look absolutely incredible. I absolutely love that remastered Mini by David Brown. And we have the Speedback GT here as well. Absolutely love that. Incredible car. Let's just have a quick look at the interior here while the door is open. Can we see that? Yeah. Absolutely love it. I'm joined now by Tiffany Dell. Tiff, it's your show. <laughs> Go ahead. I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> You're a professional. This is Tiff Dell, president of the London Motor Show at the end of day two, going down the pub. Bye. <laughs> Cheers, Tiff. <laughs> Tiffany Dell, the legend from Top Gear. That was the best lineup I always thought. Tiffany Dell, Quinton Wilson, Jeremy Clarkson. Can't beat it. Tiffany Dell. <laughs> So I've left the best until last and it has to go to the Jaguar Lightweight E-Type. For me, it's the car of the show. Now Jaguar back in 1961 when they released the E-Type, huge interest in the car, fabulous looking car. But two years later in 1963, Jaguar decided to build 18 lightweight E-Types, but only 12 were built. So there was a remaining six to be built. Still had the chassis numbers and all ready, but they were not built. So Jaguar back in 2014 decided 
to do a continuation series and build those missing six cars. So all genuine chassis numbers from the 60s on this car. This is one of the remaining six. Hugely special car. The detail that Jaguar has gone into in building these cars is just incredible. Definitely, without a doubt, my car of the show. Features an XK engine, 340 brake horsepower, very fast car, only about 1,040 kilos in weight in this Jaguar lightweight E-Type. Definitely the car of the show, for, in my opinion, in my opinion. So that is where I'm going to leave you all today. Take care, guys. <laughs> and I will talk to you all again in the next video. Until then, take care. Cheers. Uh -huh.